What's good, my fellow seekers? Oh my goodness, Metaphor Refantasio is here. Today, I wanna to go over a bunch of tips, tricks, and absolutely everything you need to know about the game now that the real version of it has been unlocked. First, for everybody who has the digital deluxe version, let me show you how this works. I went ahead and restarted a brand new file. I spoke to more. I got to the point where you get to the mine and then Stroll unlocked his archetype. So if you come over here to this chair, there's gonna be a chest on it, open up that chest. As soon as you do, it's payday. You're gonna get an insane amount of money, 35,000, that's a lot, plus a bunch of amazing items. So we're gonna jump into the inventory. The first item I got is this right here, stale black bread. This is going to deal 300 almighty damage to one enemy. They give you a nuke. That's pretty cool. Next, you're going to have magical bread. This allows all party members to gradually recover MP while walking around in dungeons for 60 seconds. Now, me personally, I hope this is not a one time thing. I hope that at some point we're going to be able to cook food in this game. I think it was Persona 5 Royal that you was able to cook curry and the curry gave you certain advantages or like extra experience or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it did, but I hope in this game we're able to make this magical bread so that you can use it more often. Don't spoil it for me if that's the case, but hopefully this is, you know, me wishing for that. Next up, they're going to give you this right here, the hero's essence. They're going to give you 10 of these. 10 times 100, that's 1,000 experience for your archetypes, but that's not it. You're also gonna get this right here, the hero's fruit, which is 500 experience for an archetype. Times that by five, 2,500 plus 1,000, that's 3,500 experience points. It's a great idea to go ahead and throw these into whatever you need early. Now, that's not all. You're gonna get a bunch of amazing key items. All the different outfits or the uniforms from all the other games thus far are gonna be in your inventory as soon as you open up this chest, but you're gonna to need to drop over to the equipment tab in order to unlock them. So let's go to my character. All the way down at the bottom, there's something called clothes, which is the touring ensemble currently. I jump in here and there you go. I have every single uniform that I received from the DLC, so it's all right here for me. If you've been looking for it, there you go. You can switch this out at any time, so go ahead and do so, so you can go ahead and get your drip right for your next dungeon. And that's for every character. All the characters are gonna be able to wear their own version of whatever it is, so make sure you switch it up from time to time so you can have your squad looking right. But that's not all. Let me give you a couple of more extra tips and tricks and things that I've learned from all of my 10 to 12 hours between the demo and the main game. First things first, archetypes. So, yeah. The best archetype in the game for your protagonist is probably either going to be healer or mage. I personally think mage is the best because there's just so many different things you're going to be able to do. Now, if you started the game over, Grius is going to be able to learn an archetype after you speak to more. I taught him the seeker ability because I'm not going to spoil it here, but for story reasons, that's just something that I didn't necessarily need. So I taught myself the mage and from there, I'll be able to level this up early. The higher you get your mage, the more of the more powerful spells you unlock early in the game. And eventually when you unlock synthesis, you're gonna have yourself as a mage, you're gonna be able to put somebody as a healer, and then if you still have a seeker or if you give the seeker to somebody else, you're gonna be slapping for insane damage. It's just something that you probably should try to get into as early as possible. Plus, at some point, you're gonna to talk to more, and he's gonna teach you how to inherit abilities from other archetypes that you've already learned. Your abilities don't cross between characters. What that means is, if you, your protagonist, has learned the mage archetype and the seeker archetype, you can inherit from what you've already learned. But if, let's say, Stroll has the healer archetype, you can't learn something from Stroll only from the archetypes that you have personally taught that character. So make sure that you're adding up on that mag, unlocking all your archetypes for who you want them for, and you kind of sauce up your character so that you can be able to do all the moves that you need in battle when you need them. Now, let's go a little bit deeper than that. Let's jump into the calendar. The calendar is probably one of the most confusing but most easiest things to understand once you understand how it works. 
these little random markers you're going to have here are going to be special events or main story events that cannot be skipped they're going to come inevitably when they get there you want to make sure that you have everything done before those deadlines because once those deadlines hit that's it what that means is this game is going to naturally progress through the days every single time you go to sleep if you jump into a dungeon that takes your day away it's going to automatically push you to night so you're pretty much done if you want to get something done you might want to choose not to go to a dungeon for the day and try to hang out with some of your followers or some companions and go talk to them enjoy time with them do some of their quest and whenever you do a quest or whenever you do an event that's going to progress time the game will tell you so you're really going to have to manage your time wisely before these major events of the storyline make sure you're on the lookout for special discounts on stores so that you can go in there and buy your materials and your items when they're on sale because money in this game is going to be hard to come by if you're not constantly stacking up on it or farming for it checking back on your request tab from time to time is going to show you exactly when your deadlines are just in case you forgot as well as the rank or the difficulty of the current quest you're on followers so these people right here are your best friends they're your bread and butter your peanut butter to your jelly whatever you need them to be that's what they are so make sure that when you unlock these people you definitely hang out with them get to know them talk to them and exhaust all of their dialogue talking to them is probably one of the fastest ways to try to sort of get up their little companion ranking but at specific points of the story they're automatically going to rank up especially if you're constantly talking to them and doing different requests or special quests for them hanging out with them is going to be one of the fastest ways to get this up getting this up is very imperative because when you start to unlock it you're going to get different special things from them so it's a great idea to just go ahead and do so last but not least i want to go ahead and give you a couple of tips and tricks for the party formation formations in battle and how to kind of navigate it so in your party tab right here you can go ahead and set your formation if you're a mage it might be a good idea to go ahead and put yourself in the back when you're in the front you're going to be doing a bunch of melee damage but you're also going to take more damage if you're in the back you're going to raise your defenses you get that little bit of defense or that mitigation going when somebody tries to hit you with a melee attack it doesn't do as much damage so as a mage because you're not doing physical attacks it's just a great idea to be in the back of the party all right now let's do a little bit more of an advanced tactic guarding when you guard in this game two things are going to happen one it's going to raise your defense and it's going to completely stop you from being hit with your weakness which is very important if your enemy hits you with a weakness they're going to get an extra turn so you just negated your weakness as well as giving your opponent an extra turn or a way to get a critical hit on you that's going to be awesome it's really good to use or take advantage of this whenever you get the chance to do it especially if your opponent is coming in with a huge heavy hitting attack so whenever you see them charging up for something it might be a good idea to take different characters who may have a weakness and kind of put them to the back of the group and then Go ahead and slap them into a guard so that they can be ready for the incoming attack of course if you're interested in the lore in this game you want to know a little bit more about what's going on the memorandum is your best friend all the study notes the magic the nature the history the people the culture is all in here for you there's so much lore there's so much to get into this game is insanity man i sat here and i read every single thing when i was doing the demo so i'm not going to read it all again but yes there's some pretty cool things going on in this world take it in enjoy it have fun with it. These Atlas games are created for us just to lose ourselves in these fantasy worlds. And this is probably one of the best ones they've created so far. If you like what I do here on the channel, make sure you smash that like button for me. Sub if you don't want to miss out on any more tips, tricks, guides, and everything else you'll need from Metaphor Refantasio. This is your boy M of M Stage D for now though. I'm out of here.